Welcome to the Memorial Nuremberg Trials. You are in the East Wing of the Nuremberg Palace of Justice, which was opened in 1916. Here, between the 20th of November 1945 and the 1st of October 1946, an international military tribunal called to account leading representatives of the National Socialist State for war crimes and crimes against humanity. Criminal trials are still being held in this courtroom. You now are in courtroom 600. This is where the Nuremberg trials were held from the 20th of November, 1945. In August, 1945, the Americans requisitioned the entire Palace of Justice and started refurbishing it for the trial of the main war criminals. This mainly involved courtroom 600. We will now describe the layout of the room in 1945. To the left of the visitors' area, there is the impressive main entrance to the courtroom, framed by green marble pillars and a Medusa's head. The bronze figures above represent the fall from grace in the middle, with Eve handing Adam a fruit from the tree of knowledge. The young man on the left, holding a sword, represents Germanic law. His opposite on the right, holding the fasces, stands for Roman law, both roots of German law. Beyond the door and behind a wooden barrier, the indicted main war criminals sat in two rows. This area was much larger then because it had to provide space for 22 people. Two of the original benches from the dock can be seen in the permanent exhibition. They were specially designed by the American architect Dan Kiley, who was also responsible for the alterations in the courtroom. The rather Spartan design deliberately did not take into account that the defendants were VIPs. In the front corner of the dock sat probably the best known defendant and second in command in the National Socialist State. The fact that Hermann Göring had to sit in the dock and face a court of law like any other common criminal was one of the most important achievements of the Nuremberg trial. Next to him, in the first row, the defendants included the Deputy Führer Rudolf Hess, Field Marshal Wilhelm Keitel, the Governor General of Poland Hans Frank, and Julius Streicher, publisher of the anti Semitic rag Der Stürmer, the Stormtrooper. The defendants in the second row behind Göring included Admirals Dönitz and Reda, Reich Youth Leader Baldur von Schirach, as well as Minister of Armament and Architect. Albert Speer. American soldiers wearing white helmets stood along the wall and guarded the defendants during the court procedures. Behind the door to the rear of the dock, there is a lift which was used to take the prisoners down to the ground floor where they were led through a long wooden corridor to the adjacent prison. In front of the dock, the defense counsels sat at two long tables. In the left-hand corner of the courtroom, the interpreters worked behind glass partitions. For the first time ever during a trial, they simultaneously translated the proceedings in the courtroom into the four official trial languages, German, English, French, and Russian. Immediately opposite today's visitors' benches, where you can now see the raised judges' bench, was the witness stand, close to the door on the right. This is where the witnesses disclosed the crimes committed during the German occupation of Poland, France and the Soviet Union, the murder of prisoners of war and the abduction of people for forced labor in the National Socialist armament industry. The murder of millions of European Jews was first admitted to the world by Rudolf Höss, commander of Auschwitz concentration camp, when he was called as a defense witness for Kaltenbrunner and the commander of the 6th Army, General Paulus, confirmed that right from the beginning of their reign, the National Socialist leadership had planned war. French resistant fighter Marie-Claude Vaillant Couturier described the crimes in the concentration camps of Auschwitz and Ravensbrück. Former concentration camp inmate Samuel Reismann testified to the industrialized murder of thousands of prisoners within 10 minutes of their arrival in Treblinka extermination camp. Depending on the face of the trial, 
There were maps or diagrams displayed on the front wall behind the witness stand, showing the German conquering expeditions, organizational plans of the SS and police, and also a map of the camp layout in Auschwitz. On the 29th of November 1945, film footage from the liberated concentration camps and from murder sites was screened here. These images shocked both the people present in the courtroom and the public and showed the defendants' actions in a harsh light. On the right-hand side of the courtroom, with the large windows at their back, the four allied judges sat on a raised bench. In the corner to the right, behind the judges' bench, cameramen were positioned, recording the trial on film. Several newly created holes in the wall above and in the wood panelling also served as viewing windows for court reporters and camera crews. In front of the judges' benches, the court secretaries and stenographers were seated at two long tables. The rostrum was placed roughly in the middle of the courtroom. From this point, the prosecutors and defense counsels made their statements or interrogated witnesses and defendants. This is also where Chief Prosecutor Robert H. Jackson made his famous opening statement. The wrongs which we seek to condemn and punish have been so calculated, so malignant and so devastating that civilization cannot tolerate their being ignored because it cannot survive their being repeated. The speakers stood with their backs to the Allied prosecution teams, which sat at four big tables where today the visitors' benches are placed. The largest alteration to the courtroom concerned the visitors' gallery. What today is the back wall of the courtroom was taken out for the trial in order to provide space for the representatives of the press. Above it, the Americans inserted a gallery where visitors could be seated. Today, they have been replaced by four small windows which allow a view of the courtroom from the exhibition level. Instead of today's chandelier, there were bright downlights during the trial. These were necessary because for security reasons, the large courtroom windows were covered and because light was needed for film recording during the trial. After the courtroom was handed back to the German judiciary in 1961, the Bavarian judiciary had all the alterations removed. In spite of having been turned back to its original state, there is still some sense of the atmosphere which existed when, for the first time in world history, criminals who were heads of state were convicted in a fair trial in the eyes of the world. The American chief prosecutor, Robert H. Jackson, in his opening statement at the beginning of the trial said, That four great nations, flushed with victory and stung with injury, stay the hand of vengeance and voluntarily submit their captive enemies to the judgment of the law is one of the most significant tributes that power has ever paid to reason. This is the real meaning and importance of this location, courtroom 600 in the Nuremberg Palace of Justice. <laughs>